Hi, this is Amber. And this is Lisa. And you're listening to Unexplained Arkansas, a new podcast that explores urban legends, mysteries, and the unsolved in the natural state. We're just two best friends discussing the unexplained in Arkansas. Hello and welcome to Unexplained Arkansas. This is Amber. And this is Lisa. And this is our next episode of our podcast. Uh, this is either episode three or four. Uh, one of the two. We're doing a double. We're doing a double feature. <laughs> we have two that we are going to record in one night. So uh, you'll get both of them by this weekend. So we're just going to have a bank of episodes for everyone to choose from. So I'm so it's, excited. It's a Christmas miracle. It is. It is your <laughs> Christmas bonus. We give Christmas bonuses yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. It's five so days how to sh- Christmas, people. Is it five? Yeah, five. I guess it is. Yes, yes. Today is December 20th. It's my oldest son's birthday. He Yay. turned 16 today. So happy birthday to Bo. Happy we birthday, Bo. We are just so happy with uh, how he turned out. He's such a sweet young man and Aww. does all kinds of, uh, you know, just great things, baseball band, all the things. So happy and, birthday and to Bo. Now he's out driving around. Now he's out driving around, but I'm watching him on the 360. So there, there you go. You go. <laughs> Can you imagine if our parents had 360 on us when we were when we no. were in high school? <laughs> no, it'd be like, why are you just well? <laughs> where are you and why are you there? No, I thought you were going to say, you where at are a cemetery? you and why are you at a cemetery? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why are you at a cemetery right now? <laughs> yes, that like, probably cool. would have been, uh, you know. Half of our locations back then, but not half. No, I'm kidding. Hastings. Go, it was Hastings. Ha- yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, that was, there a, was Midnight Oil first. Midnight Midnight Oil, which was a coffee shop, mm-hmm. and then Hastings, which was like movies, books, magazines, all of it, music. And now people yeah. do hang out in that parking lot still. I think people still park there in the old Hastings parking lot. You mean all because it was in two locations. You mean like when we yeah. were in high school when it was by well, the Wendy's? Yes, when we were in high school. Because now it is a an <laughs> that location is an Aaron's rent to own. But people oh, no, still hang out in that parking. No, but the Goodwill's beside it. It's oh. beside the Aaron's. Okay. But it's it's like an Aaron's in the Goodwill. But it's right across the street from that mega sonic that they built. Yeah. So yeah. I miss the days when we so would many go changes. to the Wendy's. Yes. I miss the days when we would go to the Wendy's and sit in that little, like, tan sunroom and eat our, fro- <laughs> our Biggie fries. Yeah. With the, with the Frosty. You have to dip. You have to dip the fries into the Frosty. Right. If you're me. Well, I, I actually told myself we weren't going to talk about fast food today, but I oh. guess I broke that promise to myself. Um, so. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> it's going to happen. We yeah. didn't mention... The M word, though. What? You know. The no, Mac. what? The Mac D. Oh, the, the Mac- Big Mac in my glove box. <laughs> no, you- <laughs> no, I was just going to say we didn't mention McDonald's yet. <laughs> oh. oh. Well, now you we have are- to tell the sandwich in the glove box story. Oh, my goodness. I don't... I don't... I've got two food, ridiculous food things from you in high school. So, I think you... I don't know what you wanted from the glove box. But you're like, hey, get me this from the glove box. And I open it. And there was an old quarter pounder. Yes, it was not a Big Mac. Box. It was a quarter pounder. It was a you quarter pounder. And then there was one time you wanted, you're like, pull that $5. You were putting $5 worth of gas in your car, by the way. <laughs> it was ni- 1998, okay? <laughs> yes. And, you, and so you said, give me that five. And I reached into your purse. And I'm like, Amber, why is this sticky? And it's, and it was so disgusting. And I'm like, and you're like, oh, sorry, I spilled syrup in my purse. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> you knew I did not like my hands to be sticky or dirty. Yeah. Well, I still don't. <laughs> and I still apologize for that incident <laughs> so many years ago. That, that, that incident 25 years ago. <laughs> that was funny and horrific. All yes. in one. Yes, <laughs> for me. I just a syrupy I remember, five. Yeah, I remember a lot of eating out, a lot of coffee houses, <laughs> and a lot of bookstores and yes. uh, 
movie stores. So, yes. which was the nineties, you know, someday yeah. we'll talk about how cool it was living in a time when you could just go to the store mm-hmm. and rent a video or DVD and <sighs> You know, I all know. the things. I miss that part of the nineties. I know. I watched that, that new blockbuster movie. Um yes. The last yes. The last blockbuster. The last but yes. Of course. That, and that made me I sad. Love that that was on Netflix and I also really like the what's it called on Netflix? It's the the movies that made us. I like to watch that one too. Oh me too. And then they I do like the Oh, I like that. People need to watch that. But yeah, I feel bad for the kids. I mean, they don't really have anything to do. Yeah, I mean, town. they just I mean, kind of drive aimlessly, you know, mm-hmm. but. I, they have you know, food and coffee, have, yeah. but like a well, million we to, coffees. We had one. We had one coffee place. Yeah. And they have, what, seven brews across from Starbucks. Mm-hmm. And Elle's like, why did they even do that? Why didn't they put one on our side of town? <laughs> Well, you can tell Elle, I'm Elle. thinking that I'm thinking the same thing. We need one on our side of town. Another one on our side of town. Yes. So. Yeah, we have stews. Like we have a drive-through one. Two drive-through. You know, you've and you've got mm-hmm. Mr. Postman and whatever. But we need a coffee house. Like they old need a school, coffee house. Nineties yes. coffee house. Yes. Yeah. Where they can like talk poems and like they you know remember that was more the '60s when they would say like a they were like say a poem or something something remember they would like are you trying then you... to describe a poetry slam yeah whatever <laughs> <laughs> i don't really i i've never been part of one of those i don't think oh and i, was, I and did I was an english major <laughs> i did at the books a million they had like an open they had the cafe and an open mic night i don't even want to think about that <laughs> scary times scary times okay well okay. we will go ahead <laughs> I don't know how to. Tra- hey, let's get <laughs> learned. I haven't learned how to transition yet, so I'm okay. still kind of learning how to do these things. But we're going to go ahead and transition into our um, into our story today, and we will mark it on the episode when the when the actual story starts, which is six fifty seven. So at six fifty seven. Yeah, I'm marking it. Them? So well, yes, because they may not want to hear our banter, <laughs> or then again, they may love it. There you go. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, you, are you ready? I oh. am very ready. I'm so excited. I have been excited about this one for a couple of weeks. So, you have the floor. Tell me, well, like, everything. Goodness. Well, we did say that when we decided to do The Boys on the Track, and that's what this episode is called, and might be two episodes. We'll we'll see where we land. Um, We said we were going to go big or go home. Did we not? Yes, we're going big. So this is this is a big one. It's um in the past, I think it's been pretty it's fraught with a lot of stuff. There it's like a huge onion with a billion layers. <laughs> like Shrek, like like an onion like Shrek. Like exactly like Shrek. Yes. Okay. Just making <laughs> Like it's stinky, it's green, it's big, oh, it's just Oh, okay. No, it's, it's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. And it's sad. It's just, it's, um, yeah, this case is, um, still, uh, according to, I, I do have a, a connection with, uh, the police, you know, police. And so it is still an open case. I tried to call the Arkansas state police, but I had to leave a message, but anyway, um, this is unsolved. So well, you want to dive in? I'll dive in. Yeah. You ready? I'll dive in. I'm, okay. I am waiting. I'm I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, there's just so much. Okay, so to start off with, so this case is in a county that's, and I did actually look this up. So this <laughs> this I'm gonna say this one. I'm gonna say this one more time. Alex, this. Uh, happened in a city named Alexander and some things say Bryant, but I will say Bryant, Alexander and Benton are cities in Arkansas and they all like really run together. Um, I would say, especially now, like they really, I mean, literally it's like boom, boom, boom. Okay. I've don't even get me started on when I did home loans. That was kind of a problem. (laughs) 
because you did not know literally like one house could be right next door to another house and they could literally have different zip codes and be in different jurisdictions, different cities and different everything. So it's just, it just literally runs together. But in the county, um, and this, okay, so I will say this area is 17 miles west. Aren't you proud I knew that? 17 miles yeah. west of Little Rock. So um, that's where it's located. And, and Little Rock is about, just to kind of give you, give people an idea, we're about 50 miles north of Little Rock. So um, yeah, oh, these keep popping out. Sorry, my speaker things. Okay, so this county is called, if you're looking at the county name, it's it looks like saline. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is literally spelt S-A-L-I-N-E. But if you are from Arkansas and from this area, it is saline. Okay. So you can always tell when people are not from Arkansas or not from the area. They're not familiar. I've been listening to some podcasts and I've got some funny ones for you on this because I did listen to those. What were those guys called? The... The true the garage, crime garage. True crime the, garage. Yes. So they, I don't know where they're from, <laughs> but it was super funny listening to them say some of these names. But they definitely did, said saline. <laughs> did the morbid? Did the morbid girls ever do this case? I did not look. I have no idea. So I, I am it's kind a of pretty famous case. It is. I. It looked like several. People had covered the case. It looked like crime junkies had covered it. And I, I think I had listened. I didn't know a lot about this case. Um, I think I had listened to the crime junkies because they typically do like a little snippet of a case, which. And I will. Well, let me interject okay. here that I do yeah. know a little bit about it. I actually got to meet the author of the book you're about to talk about. So yeah. I do know about most usually one of us does the research and then tells the story and the other one asks questions. But in this case, I do know a little bit about it. I've watched the author speak on this subject, the author of the book she's going to tell us about. Yes. And so, and you gave me the book <laughs> and I read Oh, it. that is true. Yes. And yeah, the I author- the author is Mara Lebret, and she is amazing. And she's written several yes. good books, but we'll get into all that. Yes. And it's literally called, I think we mentioned it the last time, The Boys on the Tracks, Death, Denial, and a Mother's Crusade to Bring Her Son's Killers to Justice. So what's the, very what's good. the publication date? It was, now this was written in 1999. Okay. okay. Yes. And so, and this, okay, so let's, we're going to get rolling. So. At four o'clock in the morning on August 23rd of 1987, so there was a Union Pacific freight train. It was carrying cargo, and it was just doing its normal run from Texarkana, and it was going to be going into Little Rock, okay? So it was on its way. It was almost finished. So as I said, this area, Alexander, is literally 17 miles from Little Rock. So... Uh, this train was doing its normal thing. It's four o'clock in the morning. I did look up the weather because for me that matters. So it looks like it was about 75 degrees. It would have been probably a little humid in August. Um, the high that day would have gotten to about, I think it was like 96. Our August weather is horrendous. Our Junes are it's pretty not nice. Fun. Yeah. No, August, August, August isn't just, fun here. It's just hot. It's just hot. It's like summer gets really started in July here. And then it just, it's boiling in August, but it would have been around 75 degrees. And it was just a really normal, it was described as just a normal, clear night. Everything was good. This train was, was headed in. It was Union Pacific train again. And so when the train was approaching Alexander, it got, I guess about a hundred feet from this spot and the, you know, the people, the engineer and such, there was probably like three, three guys there in the, whatever you call that front car, the engineering car, <laughs> they spotted what appeared to be people on the tracks. And of course they're like flipping out, they're freaking out. They, you know, they start blowing the horns. They start going crazy. I mean, they start, they automatically hit the, like, the stop, okay? 
but they know, <laughs> they know this train is traveling at 50 something miles per hour. It literally is 6,000 tons. Okay. So they know that this, this is not going to end well. <laughs> like, so they're just trying to alert the persons, the person, you know, because at that point, they don't really know what they're seeing. They just know that something's on the tracks and something needs to get out of the way. So that's what they're doing. They're just like blowing the whistle. And I think we talked about this in the Gertie. Remember how, like we talked about trains and, you know, our town is surrounded. Trains are loud. Like (laughs) trains are loud. The whistles are loud. You, you hear them for miles, especially, you know, if the wind catches right, like, I mean, I would say from my house, like sometimes I can hear a train and they are miles away from my house. Like I am not by a train track, (laughs) but anyway, so they are trying to signal and they are just getting closer and closer and to where they can start making out that it literally looks like two, they can tell it's two boys and they are laying on the tracks and they're side by side and they're just right in the middle of the tracks. And they describe it. One of the, one of the guys and describes it is they look like little soldiers. They look, they're just perfectly lined up like it, like there's, you know, so they're freaking out. They're just freaking out. They know that these people, they're people, they can tell that they're people and they're just not moving. They're motionless. And it looks like they have, they could see, they could even make out like a rifle. They could see a gun. They could see a flashlight. And they could tell that the boys were kind of covered with what appeared to be like a green tarp. Like it was just kind of like laid over like their lower half or whatever. And it did not appear. It looked like one of the boys uh, maybe wasn't wearing a shirt or whatever. I think it's described. But I mean, they are literally, you know, they have the emergency brakes on. They are blowing their horn. They are trying. They're they're trying to stop. But they know they're bracing themselves because they know that they're going to run over the, you know, these bodies. And, and that's exactly what happens. They do, um, hit the bodies. They are just beside themselves. These men are like, like devastated, (laughs) like they're in shock. Like they're just literally one of the men describes even years later that that's like still etched in his brain. Like he has PTSD from that. Like it was just like, imagine. like, I can't even, (sighs) Yeah. I mean, it's really like, I don't know, like that's tough. Like I can't even just imagine what that's like, especially, especially to know that you can't do anything about it. (laughs) That's like, that's the, that's the most horrible part. I think of train accidents is that they Mm -hmm. can't stop the train Mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Yeah. I mean, they just, they just can't. So all that they, all that they can do is just put on the brakes and try to slow down and, and then you know, blow their whistle because they're trying to just get the person's attention and, and they were trying to get these people's attention and they're, they're not understanding why they're not moving, but, but there was no movement, zero, zero movement. So, um, it looks like, so of course, eventually the train does stop. And of course, you know, the police are called the emergency authorities, all of, all the people show up and immediately the you know, the train people, the other people that are, you know, it does have some, it talks about some of the EMT showing up. They are like, this is weird. (laughs) Like, so they're immediately, it was weird just from the get go. It was weird from the get go because, well, for the train people, they were like, okay, these, these kids were motionless. Like there was nothing going on like that. That's abnormal. And then it was extremely weird for the EMT showing up because they were like, we know what oxygenated blood looks like. And it, this did not look like normal blood. There was not like, if you're like, I, I mean, you've seen deer (laughs) on the road, you know, like it's, it's disgusting. Like it's, you know, it's just, you 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 have studied, (laughs) you have studied on that subject because you had thought about going into uh, yes. working with coroners and things like that. If you, you know, that's why you yes. know a little bit more about this subject than I do for sure. For sure. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. So this was just, this was weird. This, you know, the bodies, of course, you know, the so train, of course. There? Had they been what? there for a while? Had the bodies been there according to the they blood? Could, 
according to the blood. So the thing about the blood was that it was dark, that it was not looking like it was oxygenated, meaning that when the train hit it, the, the boys were not alive. That that's what the blood was telling. Now, all the police at the scene, what was weird for the, the union Pacific people it was the police at the scene were just acting like this was an accident. <laughs> but, you know, again, there was a gun, motionless bodies, you know, black looking, not like real dark blood, not like the bright red blood, you know? Right. So like, the, yeah, the blood wasn't looking right. Like none of this made sense. You know, none of this was adding up because it's one thing. I mean, if you hit someone, or even if they were laying there, yeah, they, you know, they would have jumped up, ran. They would have tried to get away if they were, you know, any type of lucid. So at this point, it's about 4.40 a.m. when the police are arriving. And the police also never found this so-called tarp. And that was something of contention. You know, they were like, there was a, a, a tarp there. <laughs> so this tarp, you know mysteriously was never found by the police for some reason. So it was never, it was never found, never put into evidence. Yes, exactly. So a little bit later in the morning, we'll, we'll just kind of fast forward a little bit. So in the, there's a Linda Ives in her home. So she knows that her son, Kevin, Um, In fact, he's Larry Kevin Ives. He's 17 years old. So all Linda knows, and and she's married. His dad had the name Larry. So her husband, Larry, they wake up and they get a phone call from their, so this is their son's friend's dad calls them, okay? So their, his friend, his name was Don Henry. So it's Don Henry and Kevin Ives. Um, so Don's dad and his name was Curtis. He calls the Ives house and is like, do you know where the boys are? And it immediately. So all Linda knows is that the night before Kevin had told her that he was spending the night with Don Henry. Okay. So that's what she knows. And so give, give a little background about them as friends. I mean, were they good friends? Had they been friends for a while? What was that friendship like? <laughs> she had said like in the book, it describes Don Henry and Kevin as like new friends. Like oh, okay. maybe, maybe Kevin had, they were best friends. They definitely ran around together and spent a lot of time together, but it, it didn't sound like they went way back. It seemed like Kevin had kind of had a different group of friends and now was hanging out with Don Henry and Linda didn't know like a lot about him and his family. It kind of seemed like okay. newer friends. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. So, but they were good friends. And, um, and so, you know, I can't even imagine getting that call, like being like, what do you mean? Where are the boys? <laughs> like they are at your house. Like, <laughs> and so, cause, cause evidently the, the guys had been hanging out like with just kind of a normal, it was a Saturday night, the night before this happened. So the kids had been, you know, they're, they're 16 and 17 years old. They were hanging out with other people. They had been, they went to Bryant high school. So again, Alexander, Bryant, yes. all these places. That was my next, that was my next question. Where'd they go to high school? Oh, Bryant. That was the high school they went to. So they had been hanging out with a big group of friends. And so I guess probably, I think it said around midnight ish. That's when they were supposed to be headed, I guess, to Don Henry's house. And Don Henry and his family, like, they were really into hunting, evidently. And that may be weird to some people, but Arkansas is, like, full of hunters. Like, I don't really get it myself because I don't hunt. My husband doesn't hunt, but um, my brother does now. His wife, like, Elle's boyfriend. Like, a lot of people hunt. Like, when I was growing up, like, I had a boyfriend that hunted, like a lot of people around here hunt. They hunt deer. They hunt. Um, I just hunt a new show to watch. I just hunt a new (laughs) show to watch on Netflix. That's all I hunt. Me too. I hunt or yeah, (laughs) I do not hunt animals, (laughs) but yeah, they hunt deer and turkey and just all the things like ducks. And, 
and people, it's just a, it's, we're called the natural state. So there's just a lot of, um, outdoor activities. And so evidently the Henry's were very into hunting. Don Henry knew his way around a gun. He knew gun safety. He, you know, he had asked his dad, Curtis, if him and Kevin could go hunting, do like, I guess it's called spotlight hunting, which is illegal. So if you know anything about hunting or, or guns, gun safety, and I'll, I'm always, I'm big into gun safety. Like, I'm just like, oh, guns freak me out. I, I'm not going to get into politics on guns or anything, but personally, I'm very about gun safety. <laughs> so they, I'm not comfortable with a gun. Let's put it that way. I've I, never I, shot a gun. Yeah. I'm not a big I've shot gun a BB person. gun. I have yeah, shot a BB I've gun. Done that. I've shot a paintball gun. <laughs> I've been hit with a paintball gun. That sucks. I'm just going to say. <laughs> Growing up here, this is a tangent. Sorry. Growing up here, the guys were into, all of our friends were into paintball. And anywho, that was awful getting hit with a paintball gun. But anyway, um, back on course, Amber. Yes. Yes. <laughs> back i'm getting back to it but anyway uh don yeah don henry had asked his dad if they could go hunting and so they were they were doing this spotlight honey and again you're not supposed like you're not allowed to shoot your gun until it is like if you're going in the morning you're not allowed to shoot your gun until you can see like daylight okay until the sun is coming up and then also if you're if you're hunting during you know like at you know if it's getting dark you're supposed to stop hunting as soon as it's dusk, like as soon as the sun is going down. So basically, you know, that sounds like common sense to me, but you're yeah, only supposed to shoot a gun when they're, the sun is out. Makes sense. But anyway, I so this a good, I think that's a good rule. Yes. And that is gun safety. That is the law. So when he asked his dad if he could go sp- you know, if, if him and Kevin could run out and do some spotlight hunting, like his dad, he, he had evidently done this before. And his dad was like, sure. Like that was no big deal to them. It was illegal. It was not something when Linda Ives found out, uh, Kevin's mom, she was, she was not happy. <laughs> oh, I would <laughs> like, not have been either. <laughs> I would have been like, mm. Well, knowing how I am, I would have been, I'm a helicopter mom. So I would have been like, "Mm -mm." Uh, no, you didn't. But anyway, um, yeah, she, she was not happy. And, but that was like Curtis, like his Don's dad was like, sure, you guys go do your thing. He knew Don, he trusted Don. He trusted him very much. And they talk about this in the book. Like Don knew his way around a gun. He knew his way around hunting. So that was what the boys, you know, were, were going to do they were going to go out hunting and that's the last time the boys were seen so as you can kind of line up you know don henry and kevin ives were the boys on the on the tracks and when i heard boys on the tracks i always thought boys on the tracks oh my goodness like i in my head for some reason i guess i was thinking the boys were like young <laughs> and not to say they're not young they're very young 16 and 17 oh, yeah. is very young but that's i was young. thinking like like six seven <laughs> why I don't know why that that was what I thought but no they were 16 17 and so that morning you know Linda's beside herself Curtis is calling he can't find the boys and so I think sometime later on so this is Sunday you know when the bodies were hit and when the police are working it so eventually you know they're kind of putting two and two together they're calling around they're looking for their boys and this is not a big town like at especially at this time this is not a huge town it, it is very big i would say now <laughs> uh the benton bryant area alexander area is is really populated now i would say but at this time it was this was 87 this was very small town so they're looking around and they're catching wind and in fact they had heard the ives family had heard that two boys had been hit by a train basically oh, that's what they that heard. Is awful oh so my of course goodness. Yeah. So they're just, they're sick. I mean, she was already upset. She was already mad that the the boys weren't home. She was mad about right. them being out late, you know, after dark doing this spotlight hunting. Like she, I can't even, I mean, I would have been like, and what then a, a sink, I mean, oh my goodness. And, she, and she was already feeling it. Like she, her mother's, you know, intuition, I guess, you know, was just kicking in or whatever. So they did, of course, have eventually the police came and by Monday they had actually 
identified the boys, you know, by the dental records and said, yes, it is the boys. And of course they're, they're just devastated. I mean, this was in this book and this book that we're covering. I mean, this is, I I mean, I have, I have, I have a kid that age and I I can't even fathom what the, what the moms, what the parents went through. Me too. I mean, I, that is the worst news that you could, I mean, that you could ever get. I mean, period. Like there are no words. I can't even imagine. And of course they're devastated. They're like Larry. um, And this is really like the Ives really connected with the author of this book and Linda Ives, you'll kind of see is very, very active in this. Um, So a lot of this is her point of view. So a lot of it is more about Kevin, but you know, Kevin was extremely sweet boy you know that was her her baby boy she had a, a right. she does have a daughter who was older than kevin but kevin was her baby boy and um he was very close to his father um his dad was just she had never seen her husband cry until that day like i, I just that alone you know just, very just falling apart they fell out. she said that she of course when she found out she she was screaming she was just screaming what else can you do like seriously like right, i can't even right. i know it's i have faced tragedy i i have faced tragedy myself and i totally feel that that just that guttural response like you don't even know where it comes from you know it's just like you were just you're done yeah. and it's, i and it's, it's anything it's oh. it's a mix of of heartache and shock and all mm-hmm. the things oh my goodness yes just shock and just like this can't be happening but i can't even imagine and as much tragedy as i've had like if something happened to l oh my goodness just don't even want to go there (laughs) i just i can't even imagine so my heart like reading this was really hard it was just really really hard as a mommy you know yeah i felt the same way when i read when i read parts of it i didn't finish the book i gave it to you before i even finished it but um yeah it was hard for me to read i didn't i didn't read this one as quickly as i did the west memphis three books she had written oh this they're both Mm -hmm. good but um yeah i haven't read the other ones that's on the agenda and for another we will cover that one too did i give you that one too yes you did yes you i thought i did I have it. It's because I just finished this one actually this week. So it is next on my agenda and we will be covering that as well. So just yes. stay tuned for that. Yes. So, and that so will now, for sure oh. be a two-parter. If we cover the West oh, the screen, it'll be at least a two-parter, if not more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe three less Memphis. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, okay. So it's happened. They're devastated. They're in shock. And now, so they're just like, what happened? And of course, you know, when things like this happen, there's an autopsy. So this is where we're, this is going to (laughs) be the autopsy. So at this time, the state medical examiner, um, so I will say, you know, we didn't, it's not like we had tons of state medical examiners. And even, I think even now, like we do, like every county has like a coroner. And, and like Amber said, I did look into being a, a deputy coroner. So I, I did read the entire manuals <laughs> front to back. <laughs> and I did go on a, a ride along. Um, and not to say I won't ever do that, but again, but I just have put that on the back burner for now. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to read the manual. You still have, you the have, manual? I saw that. Yeah. You yeah. still have that. Oh I, oh, I have the manual. And so, so each County, like we, we like vote in a corner and this person is, is an elected official. They're not necessarily a doctor or anything. And then they have deputies. And so literally they do, I want to say they do a two or th- maybe it's longer because it's been a while since I've read the manual, but um, they do a training with the Arkansas state police. Uh, so they do go through a training, but they are not, you know, they are not doctors. Um, and so when there's a, any type of suspicious death, the coroner automatically, like even to this day here in Arkansas, they automatically send the body or recommend the body 
to go to the state crime lab. Okay. So they're going to go to the state for the autopsies. So well, that's a good, that's a good segue to this next part that I want you to talk about, which is the coroner at the time in Arkansas. That's yes. That's where I'm, that is where we are headed people. So, so this at this time, so still like the state coroner, of course, at that time and this time is in Little Rock. So, of course, this is right there. This this is not very far. But the state medical examiner, his name was uh, Fami Malik, Dr. Fami Malik. Um, and he, so I guess the, you know, it takes them a little bit. It doesn't, you know, it's not something that they do overnight. But um, Dr. Malik had been in Arkansas, I want to say since 1981. So this was 87. He had been there for a few years. Um, we'll kind of dive into it. He he would he was pretty pretty controversial. So um, he and it was for actually not, me... for not just this case for several cases <laughs> for several reasons. Yes, and we'll kind of talk about that. But he was um, a naturalized American citizen. He was born and raised in Egypt. Um, he did speak clearly, but it was a little bit of a broken. You know, he did have an accent he had an accent so um but evidently he he came in in 1981 and evidently the person that he replaced had an even not so great reputation himself <laughs> um wow. so yes and and as you'll find out that's very hard to believe but uh, a doctor marx had been in the position before and evidently Dr. Marx had had a very scandalous office, just a lot of craziness go on in his office. People were always questioning um, the rulings and such. And so Dr. Malik came in behind Dr. Marx and supposedly Dr. Malik was, you know, going to be this brilliant person that kind of cleaned up Dr. Marx's whole department. And and when I say, so he is the state medical examiner, he, he is the one that rules on every single death. Like he has the final say, like it is him. <laughs> and so that anybody has, ha, anybody that dies and is sent for an autopsy, uh, the, the state medical examiner will rule on that death, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, well, okay. So if it is natural cause okay so okay. they don't get an autopsy and that yeah so they are ruling on autopsies for sure yes and and i would say i would say most of the time you know a good coroner is going to automatically if there's any type of suspicion and and honestly i was told from the existing coroners that if the person is a young age they'll be like send them Right. So, <laughs> so I will say that because the, I the one. how many autopsies there are in, our, in the state of Arkansas every year. I don't know. That's a good question. We'll yeah. have to look that one up. Yeah. But write that one down. I'm writing it down. I'm, I'm like, ding, write that one down. Um, that is a very good question. So, um, because I have, anyway, there, there are several people in the state that do the autopsies or help, but there is like a head, like they're like an executive officer. So now in these days, but back then it was Dr. Malik, like anything that he said went. So it, the, they had already buried the boys. Okay. So the funerals had already happened. Both boys had their funerals. They had their burials. Um, you can just imagine their parents are just in shock. They're just beside themselves and their parents are wanting to know what happened. So they, um, they get a meeting with Dr. Malik, you know, to go over the findings. And so, and right from the get go, I will say all of the police, like the, the sailing, you know, the county sheriffs or whatever, all of them were saying, you know, it was an accident. That was just, you know, they were assuming the boys got hit by the train. And for some weird reason, the boys were on the train, you know, tracks or whatever. So when they meet with Dr. Malik, you know, they they don't know what to expect, but what Dr. Malik tells them is that the accident resulted from basically marijuana intoxication. So he was saying that they had so much of that, 
I don't know what it's called, like the THC in their systems. So it was so high that basically he was trying to tell them that the boys were so incapacitated from marijuana that they could not get themselves off the track. That's why they were hit. And of course the parents are like dumbfounded. (laughs) They're like, are you kidding me? Like, and of course Linda's like, I didn't know that marijuana would, would do such, you know what I'm saying? Like she was totally, yes. I mean, they were like, no, like really? Like they were like, there was no way they were just trying to tell them. And immediately the parents were like, no. So they had sent. I'm looking, I'm looking right here at some stuff I just pulled up. So they had, or the, this uh, Dr. Malik had ruled that they apparently may have smoked the equivalent of 20 cigarettes, 20 that's, marijuana cigarettes and fell asleep. That's on where the I was track. going. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Sorry. Well, I was sorry. Well, Hey, you, I did this to you. So I, I guess you're doing it to me. <laughs> I just couldn't, I was like, how much marijuana, how well, much marijuana does <laughs> that's he, my question dr malik didn't even go into that they literally had to send off dr malik's report to some you know another doctor in san antonio to get just an opinion about these marijuana findings because they were so ridiculous to them so this uh it was a dr james garrett in san antonio came back and said like literally Yeah, they would have to smoke to be this high, to be as high as Dr. Malik was saying they were, they would have to smoke 20 marijuana cigarettes. Wow. That's and and that still wouldn't yes. (laughs) Yes, that is a lot. And so basically he felt like they just mm, he didn't he felt like Dr. Malik just did not understand even how to read any of that or gauge like they just he felt like he just wasn't you know up to date on that type of item marijuana yeah on marijuana like how to read it how to say how much was in the system and such so because he was saying 20 marijuana cigarettes there's no way these kids like how much would that even cost like where would they get that Oh, that and, would cost and, a lot, I guess. I don't and, know. This is 1987. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. And literally, they, they were seen at 12-something. I mean, it was after midnight when they decided to go hunting. So somewhere between midnight and 4 a.m., they are completely, like, out of it, on the tracks, not moving, looking like they're dead. <laughs> Just laying <laughs> like, side by side. Laying side by side. Like, they said, like, little soldiers. So that was clearly not not happening you know the the parents were like no mm -mm, we're not we're not even doing this so at that point you know they're of course upset they're extremely upset with dr malik they're questioning him and then dr malik is you know in this meeting with them even he's extremely rude he's extremely prideful he good you know (laughs) yes yeah I mean, the parents have not been through enough, you know, that he's just going to be like a jerk to them. So he lit, they had literally told like both sets of parents literally told Dr. Malik that they did not want to see the autopsy, you know, pictures. And he kept trying to show them, like kept trying to rub the pictures of their boys in their faces, like just kind of okay, like, well, so, look, at, look at this and look at that, you know? So the do bag coroner is being really mean <laughs> to the parents right after mm-hmm. their children had died. Oh, I don't like that. Yes. And even he, it was just, they said it was just really weird. Like, you know, like he even went into, you know, talking about how, you know, he was a father himself and that he had found out that his son had smoked marijuana and that he wasn't happy. It was just, you know, I whatever he was doing well, he would was have not died of shock. He would have died of shock these days because uh, it's yes. everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, yeah, especially especially in parts of the state. <laughs> uh, not our state. <laughs> Is it well we can't use it for part I, I think in Missouri it's 
you can I think you can use marijuana. it with a, I think you can use it recreationally maybe in yeah. one part of our state, but oh, okay. I think you have to have a medical card like for the from, rest. Yeah, something like that. Okay. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm like I still feel like I, I, we we grew up in the '90s. Marijuana is a gateway drug, right? I know. We listened <laughs> to we, we listened to Zach Morris and AC Slater, and we said no because we stupid. said no. You, you, do, you just say no to yeah to get the gateway drug. That's don't you, which don't is you what. remember when that when that star came, or that famous uh, actor came to the Saved by the Bell High School, and they all made the yes. commercial with him, and then he ended up. <laughs> smoking marijuana Doing drugs. and they tried to get <laughs> kelly to smoke marijuana that's what yes. we were raised on we knew to say no saved by the belt we i mean no way no you just you say no <laughs> and we also know that only you can prevent forest fires i know my son asked me who smoking the bear was the other day i'm like are you just kidding He's oh, like, no. no. And then once he asked me who McGruff <laughs> the crime dog was, and I said, you don't know who McGruff Aww. the crime dog is? He said, no. He's okay, like, well, I wasn't... we're zennials. What? And we're zennials. Yeah. And that, those were all big things. Say by the bell, McGruff, all yes. the things. Yes. So we know all that. So, <laughs> okay. So they, so we're back to talking about, so Malik is, is pretty much have completely, pissed off the parents <laughs> okay the parents are As i would mad. expect yes i would be so mad i'd be like okay so you're saying my son got so high smoked 20 marijuana cigarettes and got killed by a train you know and i will say also this i will divulge this so kevin's dad worked for union pacific oh that's interesting. and he, yes and i and so you know i mean it's just like they kind of equated it to like, you know, a dentist kid. Like, obviously, if your dad's a dentist, you're going to have, you're going to know about taking care of your teeth. Right. Right. So do you think that Kevin knew about train safety? Probably. Yes. Yeah. I, would I mean, his, would. yeah, his dad had pretty much, I think it, I think his dad was on a different route, but he had actually covered that same route that the boys were were on the same that same route and just thank god that he wasn't on that route that night but um i know, I know. that's that's crazy mm-hmm. that would have been just oh so they so the parents are mad the local authorities are just 100 percent backing malik you know everything's like basically like okay dr malik's the man and this is what we're gonna go with it was you know basically you know is just drug the- is he the man? I don't think yeah. he's the man. <laughs> Back in the 1980s, the Saline County Sheriff's Office thought he was the man. And oh. well, we'll kind of get 80s, into some I other thought, stuff. Back in the 80s, I thought Kirk Cameron was the man, but not anymore. Oh, me too. I had the poster. And, there, and there's probably going to be some people who are like, who's Kirk Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> he was on Growing Pains, people. Growing Pains. And his sister was on Fuller... Full house, fuller house, full house, yep. fuller house. Okay. Um, so back to it. So the parents are, you know, they're doing what any parent would do. And Linda is heading this ball game and she is like not taking this as the gospel. You know, she is like, no, we're going to do our own investigating. So of course, that's when they had sent Malik's findings to this other doctor. That other doctor came back and was like, no, this is crazy. Um, so there, you know, she is just fighting with them. And then also, you know, Linda's, Linda's talking to people. They're getting tips. People were calling their house. You know, Linda had, um, had talked to the EMTs about the fact that the boy's blood, you know, lacked oxygen. You know, there's, they knew that there was just something weird going on and they knew that, that they just, they had to keep pushing, but the sheriff was the sheriff. His name was, uh, James Steed, he was behind Malik. He didn't think that anything, you know, was going on, but they just kept pushing, you know, they just thought it was a strange accident and these parents just needed to take it. So Linda and them are, you know, they're, they're writing letters. They're talking about, you know, how that this, this isn't what happened. They're trying to get 
answers, okay? So they are introduced to a man named Dan Harmon. This is going to be Dan, let's just say Dan Harmon, you'll hear about later. Like we'll kind of dive a lot into Dan Harmon, but and this, this is, is the Dan Harmon that directed Community, our other favorite oh. show. <laughs> this is, no, this, this would have been an attorney uh, in uh, Saline County in the 80s. <laughs> Um, and he would eventually be like the prosecuting attorney for the the county. Okay. Um, so he is helping the Ives. And so the Ives have been very vocal uh, against the sheriff. Okay. And the sheriff, you know, doesn't, of course, doesn't want to be criticized because the sheriff is a, an elected position. (laughs) So, uh, Dan Harmon evidently poses a deal between like the Ives um, and the sheriff and just says, hey, you know, if you, you know, if you sheriff, you know, help us, then the Ives, particularly Linda, is going to stop talking bad about you. OK, so this is so this is happening after after the boy's death. It's just a lot of, you know, it's just crumbling. They're not happy. So six months after the incident, it says after a three day hearing in the Saline County Courthouse, uh, which is located in Benton, and again all that runs together, um, they did get help in making like changing Dr. Malik's ruling uh, to you know because he had said it was accidental, so they did get it overturned, and so basically he said, well, I'll change it to undetermined. <laughs> so it went from accidental to undetermined at first. And of course, um, they're still working. Dan Harmon's still helping them. And so they did actually, it it says in like 88. So this was 87. The next, by the next six months, they did get a second autopsy. Okay. So they exhumed the bodies. Can you imagine how horrific this is? That is horrific. I mean, Linda was not, Linda was not messing around. She was like, you know, I mean, can you imagine, like, if the community is thinking that your son died because he was so high on marijuana? I mean, that's what's going around, you know? So she was like, you know what? I'm not taking this. <laughs> like, I'm getting down to the bottom. Because she knew her son was not that child, you know? And right. she she did not want him to be remembered that way. And I don't blame her. I'd be like, mm So they did ex- exhume the bodies. They did a second autopsy. Um, And they had to get um, a medical examiner. His name is Joseph Burton. He's actually from Georgia. So they had to get his findings. Um, And what he would find is basically that, and I can't, sorry, I don't have my notes right in front of me. I thought I did. But he would find that, I believe it was Don Henry was stabbed. So he was stabbed. He where, found evidence. Uh, where, where did he, where does he think he Looked was like stabbed? it was in his back. And they did, they oh, did wow. find clothing and the clothing was actually looked at as well. And the clothing showed like a similar tear in the shirt that kind of established that, yes, they, you know, he was stabbed. So he, one was stabbed. The other one had blunt force trauma to the head like so severe okay so the other one was basically beaten to death and then the other one was stabbed to death so definitely not so high on marijuana that they decided to you know we're in a hallucin and whatever and laying on the tracks um so that's that's when so they went they had this finding and so they're going now they're dealing again they're still dealing with Dan Harmon Oh, at the same time, the NBC, so this, this whole thing, this boys on the tracks, this was bizarre. This was making national headlines. Okay. So it wasn't just staying around Arkansas. This was making national headlines and NBC, uh, the show unsolved mysteries with Robert Stack. You remember that? Oh yeah. We were on there (laughs) several times. We need to make a list of all the times Arkansas made it to (laughs) unsolved mysteries. (laughs) I loved watching Unsolved Mysteries. Like, oh, me too. That, me too. That was a good one. Um, they actually like, did a segment in the fall of 1988 on this subject. Um, and they did so talk a year to, later. 
So yes, a year later. A year, mm-hmm, a year later. And uh and one of the attorneys that was helping, you know, the the parents, he said the alleged that the boys, so this is what they're saying in nineteen eighty eight. The boys must have saw something they shouldn't have and that that had to do with drugs. So they were right away thinking the boys came up on something. <laughs> bad and they were killed because of whatever they witnessed and they felt like at that time it was due to drugs drug related um and i will say now like there we'll get into all this but there was a huge drug problem in all i'm sure a lot across the country um i think the biggest thing coming in was because they weren't listening to mcgruff the crime dog yeah it definitely wasn't marijuana it was i think the big issues were cocaine um and even meth amphetamine at that time so um and now what's scary is it's what fentanyl (laughs) Uh, and everything's laced with it so kids really just say no because your stuff could be laced with fentanyl um just saying so anyway so back to this but they did there's you know they were on unsolved mysteries um They did say, they did get together like a whole grand jury, okay? So they get this grand jury. So the point of a grand jury is to see if you have enough evidence. And what their point was, they were trying to to get this, like the Ives and the Henrys wanted the boys' deaths to be investigated. Because right now, remember it went from being accidental death, right now it's undetermined. They wanted their deaths to be homicide so that it would be, or probable homicide, so that it would be investigated. So that's what they're working on. So they are, you know, fighting in court. Their uh, sheriff Steed kind of went back on his word. You know, he he had certain monies that could be allocated to, like, looking into, like, drug-related events and and he refused to put any money um into this he he still felt like this was an accident after everything that was being said and done does that make sense like right yes he still wasn't on board with the fact that the boys it's almost like the people at that time were just like no the people in charge were like we're just gonna put this under the rug okay like this these boys just got hit by the train and you just need to get over it um so bear with me okay so now you know people are coming forward this kind of jumps bear with me okay hey i'm gonna stop right here and then start the next reel okay okay Okay. because it needs